Hello and welcome to the JavaScript prototyping tutorial series, episode one. I'm Ryan Steeman, and today we're going to cover some of the basics of rendering JavaScript in Canvas. This is what we're going to start with. It's a set of bullets firing from the center of the screen and spinning outwards. So this is what we're starting with, a blank screen. So let's jump into the code. We're going to start with calling window.onload equals init. So we have a function that is called as soon as a page is loaded. So we begin with function init with no parameters. And in this, we're going to need to grab our canvas and our context element. So we go up to the top and we define canvas, and then we define context. Now we go back to our init function and we assign them. Canvas equals document dot get element by ID C, which is defined below. Then we have context equals canvas dot get context. Then we pass the parameter 2D, which is a string. That gets us a 2D drawing context that we can put all of our drawing information to and put it on the screen. So next we need something to do whenever we run our page. So that's going to be our main game loop. We're calling it run loop. So we create a function called run loop, and now we're setting window dot set timeout, and then run loop for the parameter of 14 milliseconds. So what that's going to do is the first time we call run loop, it's going to continuously call run loop every 14 milliseconds after it hits that, that block of code. Continuing on, we need to have something to draw to the screen. So we're going to create a bullet object. It has a parameter of x, y, and velocity. So we assign our this.x to the passed in value of x, this.y to the passed in value of y, and this.radius, we're going to set it to a static value of 5. And then finally, we're going to say this.velocity is equal to the passed in velocity. But what is a velocity? A velocity is a vector 2, a two-dimensional vector. So that means it has two dimensions, in this case, x and y. So we're going to pass in for our vector 2, x and y. And then we're going to assign it simply to this.x and this.y. So jumping back down to our bullet class, we can now say that our velocity is a vector 2. So now we need to have our bullet do something. So we're going to start with our update function. So our update function has no parameters, but all we're going to make it do is move the x and y position along the velocity. Next, we need to be able to draw. So we do this.draw with no parameters. We say context.beginPath. with context.arc is our next function. We pass the, the focus in the x dimension, the focus in the y dimension, the radius, followed by the start angle and then the end angle. And both those angle parameters are in radians, so we use 2 pi for a secondary value. And then followed by counterclockwise or clockwise. In this case, it doesn't matter because we're drawing a circle. The last thing we do is we do context.stroke. This is going to commit all of our drawing data to the screen just as so. All right, from here, now we have a bullet object that can update and draw. So now let's test it out. We're going to create a bullet object at the top of our class, so we have a class scope reference to it. Then we're going to go to our init function, and we're going to initialize it. Bullet equals new bullet, 100 is the x value, 200 in the y, and then we're going to set it moving to the right at a speed of 3. So for every iteration of the run loop, we need to update our bullet, and then we need to draw it. So let's test that out. We refresh our page, and now we can see the bullets moving to the right. But now you've noticed that the bullet is drawing, but it's not erasing the old data. So it looks like we're drawing a whole bunch of bullets. So in order to fix that, we need to clear the screen after every single iteration of our loop. So to do that, we do context.clearRect pass in the starting x and y value, and then the width and height that we want to clear. 
Great. So now, let's start by moving our bullet to the center of the screen so it matches what we saw in the beginning. So we create a value called center, then we set it as a new vector to, we start with width divided by two and height divided by two. Great. So we go down and where we're defining our bullet, we set it to center.x and center.y. And then it starts in the center of the screen and moves to the right. All right, so now we have a single bullet, but we need to change it so we now have lots of bullets. So to do that, we take our bullet out of the init, and then we're gonna paste it into our run loop. So we're creating a new bullet for every single frame. Just put a note, little, little note here. So now we say bullets.push to push the new bullet object onto our array. We're going to leave the construction parameters the same as before. But now that we have multiple bullets that we need to keep track of, we need to iterate through each bullet per frame. So to do that, we're going to make, create a for loop starting with i equals zero, going through bullets.length, and then we're going to advance by one each iteration of the loop. So now we are going to assign the value of bullet to bullets of i. Oops, uh, doesn't appear to be rendering. So let's take a look. We have bullets.push. That looks fine. Let's take a look at the top here in a second. Uh, yep, so I forgot to assign bullets to be an array. So it was just dynamically assigning uh, the, the function push to the bullets object. Okay, so now let's make the bullet spin. So we're going to create a variable called counter, start it out equals zero, zero. Then for every single frame, we're going to update its value by 0 0.01. So we're going to use the counter value to assign the angle that we're shooting the bullet at. So to do this, we're going to say, velocity equals new vec2 math.cosine of counter times three and for the x value and math.sine of counter times three for the y value. So now we take that velocity value we created and assign it to the velocity input for the bullet we're creating each frame. We refresh and now we can see the bullet spinning outwards like in our beginning state. But now we have a problem. We're creating a new bullet every single frame, but we're never getting rid of bullets that have left the screen. So in order to fix that, we're gonna to have to create a function called isOffScreen to check and see if the bullet has left the screen. So we return just a chain of Boolean checks. So this.x plus this.radius is less than zero to check and see if the bullet is off the left edge of the screen. Or this dot x minus this dot radius is greater than the width of the screen. Check if it's off the right side of the screen. Then we do this dot y minus, or excuse me, plus this dot radius is less than zero to see if the bullet has gone off the top side of the screen. Then finally, this dot y minus this dot radius is greater than the height to see if the bullet has gone off the bottom of the screen. So if that function returns true for a given bullet, the bullet has left the screen, and that means we can get rid of it. So we do if bullet is off screen, we're going to say bullets, our array, dot splice at position i and one. And we're going to step back in our array position by i minus minus. So you can see here the bullets are moving very slow because we've created so many of them, the computer's having trouble keeping track of them. But now they're moving faster because we don't have a memory leak and they'll continue to move fast. So this concludes tutorial one. I hope you enjoyed it. 
The next video in the series will cover basic user interaction, so stay tuned. And I'm Ryan Steeman. Thank you for watching.